Hello, welcome to the match preview. Everton versus Newcastle United this Saturday. Half five kickoff at Goodison Park. Jack, a tough game for the Blues, but feeling much better about ourselves after beating Palace last week. Yeah, certainly, but it does nothing to downplay what a big game this is because a lot of that goodwill that you've just mentioned will go away if we can't get the result here. Mm. And look, tough game to need a win in because they're a decent side. They've got goals in the team. They've got good goal-scoring players in form, like Harvey Barnes, for example. So it, it's going to be difficult, but look, this is a game that will decide the atmosphere around Everton Football Club for the coming weeks. If we win, it's three games unbeaten, it's two wins on the bounce, two home wins put together against decent sides. If we lose, it's one win over the entire course of the season so far. It's going into an international break, which we saw earlier in the season. I think it was after the Bournemouth game, when we came off that into an international break. So it was mm -hmm. all we had on our minds for two weeks. There was no chance to change the narrative. Yeah. So if we don't get a result, it is going to follow us, unfortunately, for a couple of weeks. And it comes at a crucial time for the football club and for the manager. So very important we get a result here at the weekend. Yeah, you're right. It, it's, it's almost on. <clears throat> that knife edge scenario now. The, the narrative can be totally different. Everton win this, it's seven from the last nine. You know, and I'm moving up the table, beating a good side in the process, a side that'll be in the, the home for European football. If Everton lose, it'll be three defeats in four at Goodison, it'll be five defeats out of seven overall, which is it's really, you know, poor, isn't it? Um and and so it, it really does stand like that on that knife edge, I think. It's a difficult one for us because obviously, ironically, I thought Crystal Palace game Evan was Evan's worst performance. Certainly, at Goodison Park. Um, well, definitely the worst performance at Goodison, not the worst performance of the season. That was Spurs, but the worst performance at Goodison so far. And we won the game, which is a bit mad. Uh, we go into this game against Newcastle on a good run of form, really against them. Uh, we've certainly won two out of the last three at Goodison Park. Um, last season was a, an excellent performance, obviously a 3-0 win in December. And it really can, it can kick us into that next sort of uh, group of teams if we win. And then we go into that international break, you're feeling a lot happier about stuff. And when we come back from it, we've got Ipswich away, which is a, a tough game. But also a chance to to give one of, our, one of the teams who are around us a bit of mm -hmm. a hit as well. Um, and that is really that if that can't be understated I don't think about trying to get a little bit of momentum going at this stage of the season No, especially especially when you look at what this team seems to be quite prolific in which is going on runs mm -hmm. you know we don't have consistent form no. where it's all win one draw a couple lose one and stay at a similar level in mid-table form it's very much bad runs and good runs isn't mm -hmm. it now we don't like that. We'd like it to be a bit more consistent because it feels more sustainable. But we know it's in the pattern of this team and this manager. It is what it is. So if we're if that's going to be the way it is, we'd want to get on a good run sooner rather than later, wouldn't we? And you're right, the win last year was big because that came in one of those prolific runs where we were winning games. And I think that game in particular was one of the moments where obviously it came not too long after we had the points deduction come in. And when that initially came in, there was naturally a lot of fear and a lot of panic. And that game against Newcastle, the 3-0 win, was one of those moments where a lot of people seem to go, you know what, we're going to be all right. Mm. Forget about the points deduction. We're going to be all right because there's enough quality in this team and this manager's getting good results at the moment. Mm. We're going to be just fine if we keep playing like this. So hopefully this can be another moment this year where we can go, yeah, look, we've had the bad form and that doesn't go away. But two wins now, including hopefully a good win against Newcastle. Let's have that again this year. Let's have a bit of faith back in and let's build a bit of momentum. Everton have done quite well against Newcastle after the last mm. 20 meetings against them at Goodison Everton have only lost three of them although two of them have come in the last four games um, and Newcastle have won five of the last eight of the two teams um, home and away so it's it's one of them isn't it obviously even though they've had a big upturn since the takeover Everton have still managed to beat them a couple of times in that period at Goodison and this again represents a good chance at the weekend to do the same they're obviously not at full strength at the minute I know there's still some question marks over Nick Pope going into this game although Eddie Howe seemed to think he may well be okay it looks like Alexander Isaac is out with a broken toe 
he's definitely out of the Sweden squad, which would suggest or seem to suggest that he'll be missing from this game as well. So I think they've also got uh, Botman out as well. And, Tenali, uh, is he still missing? And Tenali was back, but I think he just got taken off the last week with a bit of cramp. So uh -huh. he, there's a doubt over him, but I think he, I think he actually is the one who, who will be all right for this game. But they aren't at full strength. Isaac is a huge miss for them. He's a, we know he's a fantastic player. Uh, but one player who we know all about and who we've singled out as the danger man is, of course, our former player, Anthony Gordon. Let's have a look at his numbers. <clears throat> Six games played, two goals he's got from an XG of 1.85. He's had no assists so far this season. And big chances created, Ned. One big chance created. There's his heat map. He's everywhere. He was Newcastle's player of the season last season. Uh, he has he's definitely gone up a level since he left Everton mm. I think Newcastle I think Eddie Howe's done a really good job with him I think he, the lads worked hard himself I think the Newcastle fans like the fact that he works hard and he, you know he's quick pace he's, he's a much better player than he was when he was playing for us he's, but he's also in a better team than he was playing in for us so you know fair play to him but he is someone we're going to have to look out for at the weekend. No, he's the obvious danger <clears throat> man, isn't he? Especially with Isaac being out, which, by the way, is massive for us because he's, he's hurt us in the yeah, past, he has, hasn't yeah. he? He's a great striker. So there is a decent chance Anthony Gordon plays through the middle at the weekend. But look, he's done brilliant for Newcastle. And, you know, we've got to put aside how we might feel about him, how we might rate him based off his time at Everton, especially yeah. the end of it. You've got to look at what he's done for Newcastle to judge him for how he's going to play against us. And he's done very well for Newcastle. And... Yeah. Look, that entire transfer, I've said it a few times about that transfer, it was a good deal for both parties, no, but was. Everton, he wasn't a £45 million player because the situation had broken down, mm. and for Newcastle, he's done very well, he's got a lot of goals, and if he were to leave them now, he'd leave for a lot more than that, so great player for Newcastle, big, big threat, a lot of pace, comfortable on both sides, as the heat map show, and so mm. he's... It's obviously versatile, and I will think we'll see him through the middle, which isn't his natural position, but when you look at the way Newcastle have been playing this year, mm. especially going on the break a little bit more, being a bit more of a counter-attacking side, his pace is going to be a big, big weapon for Newcastle, so that's going to require the defenders to stay very switched on. Mm. Yeah, hey, listen, I think you're absolutely spot on. It was a, a good deal for both of us. I think some Newcastle fans took it as it was just sour grapes for us when we were saying, not that bothered about losing them. And it wasn't. It, it it gone. That sort of the thing we'd had the season before, he'd given everything. Because he did. But he got to the summer and something changed. Uh, his agent was in his ear. He had obviously Chelsea and I think he did want to make the move to Chelsea in the summer and Everton. <coughs> I think Everton would have sold him in the summer. It's just Chelsea never... The, the figures that were quoted never, were never real. Mm. I think the most they offered was around 30 million and Everton wanted more like 50 for him. Um, and he wanted to go, I think, which is fine. You know, we, we know he's a boy at Liverpool fan, so it wasn't like he's leaving his team. Didn't have the attachment. No, there was no attachment there, obviously, and, and he's an ambitious lad, I think he said that. So when it when it came to that January, he'd already, you know, threw his toys out the pram for us. So that sort of relationship was breaking down. Everton got a good, good amount of money, and, and Newcastle got a good player who they've then gone on and developed. Um, let's have a look at Newcastle's team last time out. It's that very much that four <laughs> in the back. Obviously, Pope was back, Trippier, Shah, Dan Byrne, Lewis Hall. And then they obviously had Tenali come back after his suspension. Bruno Gamirez, Joe Litton, Harvey Barnes, Anthony Gordon, Jacob Murphy there as well. Um, they made a really good start to the season. It's the best start since the 12 years, I think. This they got 11 points from 18, which is a very good return. I have seen quite a few in Newcastle's games. <clears throat> And I would suggest they've got more points than they deserve so far. That's not saying they're not a good side. Just some of the games, they've been sort of fortunate to win. However, the caveat to that is that's what good sides do. They win mm -hmm. games when they're not playing well. And that's what it's about. But the life for Everton, sort of, the, the you know, what we should be looking at is Fulham beat them at Craven Cottage 3-1. And therefore, for us... We've got to try to do exactly the same this week, but it will be a tough game. 
Yeah, well, you know, it's not a dig at them, is it? It's the same we say about the win over Crystal mm. Palace last mm. week. It's sometimes you do win when you're not at your best. Yeah, so yeah. Credit to Newcastle for being able to dig in. I think about the Wolves game as well, where Wolves gave them a very difficult time, but they came back and got mm. two late goals, and that goes to show the attack and talent they've got in that side, that they can come back from these positions and mm. get results when they aren't necessarily <laughs> the best. They've got a good team, and... One thing I've been impressed with Newcastle by this season is their press. I think especially against the game against Tottenham, they really, really hate Tottenham with their yeah. press because Tottenham want to play out yeah, the back. Yeah. Their press forced Tottenham to go long and consistently give the ball away. Now, they did great in that game, Newcastle, but fortunately for us, that's not something they can necessarily hurt us with. No. Because no. we like to go <clears throat> long anyway, you know, and a lot of people might not necessarily like that and might wish that, you know, we could do a little bit more with the ball on the floor, but it's what we're working with currently. Mm. And at least in this specific game, it takes something away from Newcastle that they won't be able to hurt us in the same way they hurt Tottenham. We've got to be we've got to be wary as well. I think there's only Villa and City have won more points than Newcastle from losing positions so far this season. So they are a team who stays in the games. Um, yeah. Let's have a look at uh, Everton last time out, the team that they played. There uh, we go. The team that beat Crystal Palace, obviously Jordan Pickford and goal. Asher Young, James Tarkovsky, Jared Brantway, Vitaly Mikolenko, a left-back, Decore, Mangala, there in the midfield and then ahead of them Jesper Lindstrom Dwight McNeil Illiman and Jai and Dominic Calvert-Lewin do you see any sort of changes from that? I think Jack Harrison comes <clears throat> back in for Jesper Lindstrom he did well off the bench Harrison mm -hmm. he was, he um, he was the right the substitution to mm -hmm. make in that game and Jesper Lindstrom we're still working him out aren't we I think yeah. feels like we say this every week but he does need a little bit of time he's adapting to the league he, he hasn't got the physical side of things yet mm -hmm. although there is a talented player in there and when you've got Jack Harrison who's very much a known quantity in this team you know what he comes into this team to do and he's coming off a good performance got a very good assist for Dwight McNeil although mm. I don't think he actually got credit at the assist did he because it, 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 mm. it was the argument it took a touch mm. but it was a very good ball in the box regardless and that's the most important thing mm. so I think he is the definitive one that absolutely comes in and there is always the question of the midfield as well isn't there especially when Decore didn't have the greatest game in the middle of the park yeah. played very well at Leicester the week before but at home against Crystal Palace it wasn't quite the same performance and you have got Garner Gay coming back into the side after he's been away with some family issues so I don't think it's out of the question that Garner Gay starts this game Yeah, I think that might be a change, I think it just depends what the manager thinks the midfield obviously for them, Bruno Gamera is strong in there uh, obviously Joe Linton very good and Tone Harley's in there so it depends how Everton want to match it up a little bit. We we are a bit more direct than for us set pieces. I think no team has scored more set pieces than uh, apart from Arsenal since mm -hmm. Sean Dyche has come in um, to Everton. That's been where I think forty five percent of our goals or something like that have come through set pieces. I think when you ratio it, the goals scored, I think we're sort of behind Arsenal for that um, for the amount of goals. So that'll be certainly what Everton will be looking for. Although. Newcastle are a big side as well. Um, here's Ned Stackpack anyway for the game. This Saturday at 5.30, Everton take on Newcastle United in the Premier League. Everton vs Newcastle United's head-to-head -head record shows that in the 58 Premier League meetings they've had, Everton have won 23 times and Newcastle United have also won 23 times. 12 fixtures ended in a draw. Previous matches between Everton and Newcastle United have averaged 2.93 goals. Both teams have scored 60% of the time in this fixture. So far this season in the Premier League, Everton have averaged 1 points per game at home matches. Newcastle United have averaged 1.33 points per game at away matches. Harvey Barnes is currently Newcastle's top scorer with 3 goals. Dwight McNeil is Everton's top scorer who also has 3 goals. Cheers, Ned. Sorry, that stat I was giving you before, that was since Sean Dyche came in, um, the Toffees have scored a higher percentage of their goals uh, via set pieces than any other club. Everton have scored 66 goals under Sean Dyche. 30 of them have been set pieces, 45.5% more than any other club. So clearly, Everton, are, you know, set pieces are a, a big a big route for goals for Everton and, and 
they're going to have to watch that Newcastle RP yeah, at the weekend. Yeah, I mean, it's a double-edged mm. sword, isn't it? Because it also shows that we're not scoring enough goals from open play, mm. but it also shows that we are very effective at set mm. pieces. So it is what it is. But one thing we know for certain is that we do favour set piece scenarios, and it is mm. something we've obviously worked on a lot. And it is a potential area where we can hurt Newcastle, especially having players like Dwight McNeil on the pitch as well, who have good deliveries. Yeah. Definitely, there you go then. Everton, Newcastle this Saturday at half five. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Can the Toffees make it two consecutive wins on the run in the Premier League for the first time since April? Let us know what you think. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you want to become a Toffee TV Premier member, link is in the description. QR code's on the screen now. See you later.